Hello and welcome to our foraging walk. You're very welcome to join us. We're going to go out and about in the hedgerows locally where we live and see what we can find. And this is to follow on from the wild food workshop that we ran online. So if you attended that, we're going to have a look at some of the plants that we talked about in that workshop and see them in their natural habitat. I've got my basket and I've got my foraging stick. Very handy if you need to get something that's out of reach. So I do recommend make yourself one of these. Now, in this hedgerow here, we have all kinds of edible delights for you. First up, the nettle. Let's have a little look. There's a really good patch here. Now, we all know the nettle, I suspect, and we all know not to touch a nettle. And at this time of year, you want just those top leaves. Lee will have talked about that. And it's those that you want. So just these top kind of four here. Now, you can pick nettles using gloves. That's going to allow you to do it quickly but you can pick nettles without gloves if you're careful. And I'm gonna show you a little trick now. So I'm gonna take this leaf here and then with using my fingertips, I'm gonna squeeze the underside and pick it. Now the skin on your fingertips is thicker than everywhere else on your hands. So it's more resistant to the sting. What I'm doing there is squashing it all up and by crushing the little hairs which sting, that's gonna get rid of them. Next, I'm gonna roll that little ball in my hand, like that, get rid of those stings, and then we're gonna eat it. So, mmm. So an immediate fresh snack, and a really nice little trick to do with people and to teach them how to pick a nettle sting without getting stung and then to pop it in their mouth. That crushing action gets rid of those stinging hairs. We've also got some uh, young bramble here, or blackberry you might know it as. And the young leaves here, much like raspberry leaves, can be used in a tea. So when they're nice and fresh and this light spring green, you can pick these, pop them in some water, some hot water, and let them infuse for a while, and there's some goodness to be had there. Over here as well, we have some more stuff. Jack by the hedge, or garlic mustard, is all over here. You can see a really good example if we move this aside. This is the uh, Jack by the hedge and you can see the cluster of white flowers. Obviously early in the spring it doesn't have the flowers and uh, you're just gonna see these distinctive leaves which do look a little bit like nettle. But when you see the two plants side by side, you'll be able to tell the difference straight away. These are a lighter green, they haven't got that hairy quality to them. And of course they're topped with these white flowers. Now if we step back a bit, I'd like you to get a bit of a view of the whole hedge here. So you can see, there's the jack by the hedge here. We've got the nettle amongst it. We also have cow parsley everywhere with its fern-like leaves. I've read that this is an edible, but it's not one I've tried yet. So that's another foraging adventure for me to go on and more recipes to try. Also over here, we have the goosegrass or cleavers or sticky willy, whatever you want to call it. Let's take a look at that. There's some really good examples over here. Now at this time of year, it's getting a bit long and leggy and a bit sticky. This is a big, big uh, specimen here, but there are some sweeter ones at the back. There you go, so over on the camera, see this one here? Slightly lighter green and a lot smaller leaves, and it's those tops that we want. Really distinctive plant, of course it's the sticky plant that we stick on each other's clothes as kids, so you'll know it instantly. And that's something that Lee used in the workshop to make that succus to improve her wild teas. And laying as a carpet underneath all these wild edibles is our ground elder. And you can see it all down here. This is the ground elder, this plant, here and here. And it's those young shoots that are said to have a carrot-like flavour. Again, it's not one I've tried, so I'm looking forward to giving this a go. It's called ground elder because the leaves look very much like the elder tree. And of course, it grows low to the ground. Let's move to the other side of this little track and we have a couple of other edibles here too. Wild garlic in abundance, or ramsons you might know it as. Now the leaves are getting past their best. All the energy now is going into these flowers. But the flowers have a lovely strong flavour themselves. They make a great garnish for a salad. Really good stuff. There's actually, looking at it closer, there's a little bit of bird muck here or there. So another thing to be aware of when you're foraging and foraging safely. If we part underneath these larger leaves, you may well find some more young tender leaves underneath. There you go, there's a nice one. Nice and clean, no bird muck on that. A younger, more tender leaf. 
So they're still to be found. So you could still use these for the pestos, the kimchi, a lot of the ideas that we talked about in the workshop. I can't resist eating that. I love wild garlic, it's so good. Up here, we've got the hawthorn. The hawthorn tree has edible leaves. A lot of leaves of some of our native trees are edible, um, such as beech, and lime, the hawthorn here, hazel. Now these hawthorn leaves are probably just past their best. They're one of the first trees to come into leaf. And when they're bright spring green, you'll see them in the hedgerows when you're driving down the motorway, um, you'll see the bright spring green come out. And those are the leaves you can eat. Um, they're also known um, in country law as bread and cheese. They taste nothing like bread and cheese, but I suspect they would be good in a cheese sandwich. What I love about foraging is that once you've done a bit of practice of it, you get your eye in, you start to realize how many edible species there are on your doorstep. And we're just in this little hedgerow patch here, and we can see we've got that uh, jack by the hedge, the wild garlic, the ground elder, the hawthorn. Uh, I've lost count of how many wild edibles there are just in this one patch alone. And we're only uh, two minutes from the doorstep. Fantastic, once you get into foraging, there's so much food to be had, and so much pleasure to be had from identifying the plants and all the little wildlife discoveries you make on the way as well. We've also got dandelion up here. Let's talk about that. Everybody knows the dandelion, but which part can we eat? Well, it's the younger leaves. And of course, at this time of year, a lot of these dandelions are in the hedgerow have got quite large leaves. A little bit of a road dust on here from vehicles. It's not the best place to pick from. Also, it's quite low down. Might have had some uh, dog's urine or something on it. Who knows? So really, if I was picking for myself, I would pick more from the back. But this is easy to see on camera. So we're looking for a slightly younger leaf, if possible. Ah, here's one under here. There we go, let's pick that one. A bit more tender, just underneath, hidden there. Now, they're quite bitter, these leaves. The top tip is to remove the central stem. Cut that out and just put the green parts of the leaf in your salad or your recipe. That makes them much more palatable. Also, of course, the dandelion flower or happy yellow face, as Lee likes to call it. And these petals, a lot of people are using them in honey at the minute. They don't add lots and lots of flavor, but they add a lot of bright color and they really uh, make a salad look beautiful. Here's a plant we talked about on the workshop just down here on the edge of the road. And it's just got away in this gap. It's the chickweed. It's all amongst this dandelion here. It's this little plant with a very small white flowers at the tip. Now, the plant has leaves in pairs, and the way to tell it is that on the stem here of the plant, there's a single line of fine hairs running at one side. And that's really distinctive. Not many plants have that, so it's a good way to tell it. We're not gonna pick this particular chickweed because there's not much of it around, and using that rule of fives, we're gonna leave this one to grow on. But it's a good example of a wild edible that just gets into all corners. So don't expect to just see wild edibles out in the country. Look out in urban areas as well. Cracks in pavements, obviously where it's safe to forage. Hidden down in this little corner of our garden, we've got another wild green. And actually much like the chickweed, this plant gets away in all little kind of crags and crannies and will grow between cracks of pavement. So look out for it. This is hairy bittercress and you can find it a lot smaller. This has got quite leggy. Now the young leaves taste really like rocket, really nice kind of uh, flavor to uh, put into a salad. Very good stuff. Um, the stem at this time of year, it's getting a bit woody now, so you don't really want to eat that, but when it's younger, earlier in the spring, you can eat the whole plant there and that's good. A distinctive way to recognize it is these tiny little clusters of white flowers here at the top of the plant, and also these distinctive seed pods, like mini pea pods. And in fact, this time of year, if you're quite rough with the plant, you can actually get it, once they're mature, to pop, and the seeds will pop everywhere, and then of course that's how the plant spreads. This one's not quite there yet. But those seed pods are very much a thing to look out for to help recognize this plant. Here's another good one. Wood sorrel, not to be confused with the common sorrel, which looks totally different, but tastes very similar. 
They've both got oxalic acid in them, so they taste like Granny Smith apple peel. I think of them as looking like the classic symbol of Ireland, the clover. But of course, these have three leaves rather than the lucky four-leaf clover. But it's a good way to remember it. See these bright green ones here? They're the best ones to pick. The whole plant grows very low and spreads like a carpet. Here we are a little bit further down the track and we've got a great patch of the wood sorrel here, an even better view. And you can see those flowers now much more clearly. They're very distinctive, beautiful little flowers just peppering the hedgerow here. Nice one to pick and I really like these. This is a really good uh, snack. A lot of these will not make it back um, home because I'll eat them on the way. Mmm, so much punch and flavour out of just that tiny leaf. Beautiful, love them. Here's a nice find. The beech leaves. This is one that we didn't really talk about in the workshop, but that's the thing about foraging, you never know what you're going to find. These beech leaves are one of the last trees to come into leaf, along with the ash and the oak. The beech leaves are very glossy. Later in the year, they're going to darken off a lot more and become much more waxy. And as the cellulose builds up in them, and they become much more leafy and unpalatable. But when they're fresh off the branch like this, just burst from the bud, they make a fantastic addition to a salad. And actually, like the wood sorrel, they've got that kind of apple peel flavour to them. They're quite sweet, so a really nice thing to add to a salad. It's not a bitter flavour at all. Let me just pick one there. So you can see that up close. There it is. Slightly hairy around the edge. I really like them, they're nice, really good stuff. And of course it's an abundant food in the woodlands, beech put out a lot of leaves. So it's one you can pick with confidence, that you're certainly not going to strip the tree or anything, there's lots of leaves to go around. When you're out foraging, you're not only looking for the plants you can harvest now, but what you can harvest in a few weeks or even months time. And here we've got the elder tree, if I just use my trusty stick, the elder, of course, has the elder flowers. The elder flower cordial, elder flower champagne, makes a great addition to cider if you make your own. And here's the very start of the elder flowers here. They're going to burst into what's known as an, whoops, as an umbellifer, a cluster of creamy white flowers. But the minute they're very young, nowhere near ready yet. But I was talking to somebody today and they were telling me that down where they are, down in the south of England, the elderflowers are much further on in maturing. So something to look out for and look forward to in the next few weeks. Right, we've got two full baskets full of wild goodies there, looking really good. I hope you've enjoyed the walk and it's inspired you to get out foraging yourself. If you've got any questions about wild food or foraging, just drop us a line. Right, time to go home.